Welcome to the 2019-2020 Winter Sports Convocation. My name is Ted Hampton, and I'm honored to serve as the MC for this ceremony. Before we get started, please welcome President Father Bill Verbreich for the invocation and remarks. I welcome all of you to this Winter Sports Convocation. I especially would like to thank Mr. Ted Hampton for organizing this for us. I also ask you to imagine that you are here in the gym with me. I especially would like to thank our student athletes and managers and coaches for the spectacular season that you have given to us. I would now like to lead us in prayer. Loving God, we pray in gratitude. We pray in gratitude for our student athletes, managers, and coaches, for the successes that we have experienced this past season, but also for the challenges and perhaps even the failures, for we know that we can grow through this and you are in all of this. We pray in a special way of thanks for our parents and for our family members who have supported us through the season. We give you thanks for all the faculty and staff who also have assisted in many ways throughout this past season. We pray in a special way though, as we continue in this time of the COVID virus. We pray that we might continue to be strong, that we might be able to be neighbor to each other. We pray that we might be buff brave. We pray all this through your goodness, through your love, and through your mercy, amen. Thank you, Father Bill. And now, our principal, Greg Van Slambrook. Hello, Babuff Jesuit, winter sports, athletes, your parents. It's good to be with you, even from a distance, to celebrate your accomplishments in the winter sports season. I know, uh, mindful that some of you got to finish your seasons and some of you uh, were cut short. And so we're mindful of all that today. And uh, still we celebrate. And one of the things that is on my mind to celebrate about our athletics programs, I'm always proud of our coaches, our student athletes, our, our parents during these occasions. And uh, in particular now, what's gratifying to me is to think about how your teams, your sports, have prepared you for this moment. If you think about it, the lessons of resilience in the face of adversity, of being a part of the team, of the connectedness of the team, of the belief in your individual potential uh, to overcome and to do great things, um, and just the, uh, the habits of staying active and healthy, I hope are all serving you well in this difficult time, and I think your athletics experience uh, will help you, has helped you to do that. So congratulations, uh, especially to those who are our uh, recognitions tonight for our Chiefs Awards winners, for the role models that you've been for our school, for how all of you have made us all proud and will continue to do so. And uh, thank you so much for all your efforts during the winter sports season. Uh, God bless, and we hope to see you out there very soon. Thank you, Mr. Van Slambrook. First, I'd like to commend our student athletes on an extraordinary winter season and their commitment to serve in leadership, the Majus, and their respect for the role that athletics plays in the education of the whole person. Our entire community for their buy-in to the Inside Out initiative, thus helping develop transformational leaders who are purpose-driven and committed to education-based athletics. Our parents for their unwavering support and trust, our coaches for their dedication, energy, and talents. Jake Weinstein for all of his time, efforts, and support as the Assistant Athletic Director. Joel Clem for the energy and dedication he devotes in the Wellness Center, making sure all, our phys our, all of our student athletes are physically prepared for competition. Our athletic trainers Patrick Miller and Dave Jessup for their care and attention to make sure our student athletes are healthy. Student Athletic Director Eric Clem for his, for his dedication and humble service to his peers and this community. Father Bill Verbreich, Father Chris Johnson, Sam Glowinski, and Bree Ballard of the campus ministry staff for their time and energy serving our student athletes as they work to achieve one of our core, core values of faith development through the athletic retreat program. Greg Van Slambrook for his faith and guidance, and again, Father Bill for his continued support and involvement with all of our teams. Before we get to the Chiefs Award ceremony, I'd like to call attention to our honored guests this evening. Seated in front are members of the boys and girls swimming and diving teams who qualified for the state championships. Bell Henshaw in the 100 and 200 freestyle, Elizabeth Dolan, Kate Grammelspacher, Alice O'Brien at Bell Henshaw in the 200 freestyle relay, 
and Jack Kovac in the 200 freestyle. We'd also like to rec recognize the hockey team for their runner-up finish in the 3A state championship. Finally, the dance team who qualified for in 2A jazz and hip hop, solo soloist Bella Habash, Harmony Hicks, and Michelle Markle, duos Camille Bice and Michelle Markle, and large ensemble of Noel Duolampa, Ava Fromm, Bella Habash, Caroline Modrell, and Morgan Williamson. Please join me in congratulating these student athletes on advancing to the state championship and representing the Brebeuf community with incredible sportsmanship. The Chief's Award is the highest honor a Brebeuf Jesuit student athlete can receive. Rather than a most valuable player, the Chief should be considered the most valuable person on the team, a direct correlation with our school's motto of men and women for others. He or she should possess and exemplify leadership, coachability, mental attitude, and scholarship. The recipient can be a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. The recipient has made significant contributions to the team on and off the field, court, and course. The award is tallied by secret ballot of all team members and coaches. And now to present the Chiefs Award for boys basketball, our head coach, Todd Howard. While our winter sports combo is obviously under a different form of presentation, I'd like to congratulate and thank all of our Braves, especially our seniors, all of our seniors that call Burbuff home for what they've meant to Burbuff. We're pulling for you in your next chapter, and we know you'll take Burbuff with you and make us proud. These convocations normally in the fall, winter, and spring not only display some of Burbuff's greatest billboards, our student athletes, but also give you a deeper view of the commitment and unity that line each of these rosters. The name on the front of the jersey means a lot. Thanks to the administration, Father Bill, Mr. Van Slambrook, and Mr. Hampton, and Mr. Weinstein, and all of the parents for supporting these student athletes. The level of care and encouragement is something these student athletes feel all year long. As a senior class, this group of, of Braves have won at a high level, all three levels, freshman, JV, and varsity, spearheaded by sectional and Circle City Conference titles. Their commitment to Burbuff and our program was immeasurable. Once again, we had academic all-state performers, Max Melrose, Jade McMullen, and Alec Bevelheimer, all-county performers, Jay Higgins and Billy Smith, and all-Circle City Conference performers, Jay Higgins, Billy Smith, and Evan Altman. John Wooden stated that success is simply a peace of mind in knowing that you gave your best to become the best you're capable of becoming. This program, our seniors, and our chief award winners met that standard every single day. That mindset is tested heavily in a circumstance where they cannot finish their season or even their school year. But as our Burbuff family truly knows, that peace of mind will be forever present. They gave their all for Burbuff. This year, our group was asked to become better, tougher, closer. We had a long list of guys in the program that received meaningful votes for this award of legacy. Based on what this team brought to the table every day, I wouldn't have ex expected anything less. This group notched the most number of wins since 2002. Winning our league again helped give us momentum and confidence to cut down the nets in March. A sectional title gave us momentum for even more. Our mission wasn't completed but our journey was way more important. Selfless teammates, they pulled for one another and they ate for one another. Burbuff thanks you. They are better, tougher, closer. Jay Higgins is a wonderful son, brother, and student athlete. Jay has put Burbuff first in every conceivable way, but I loved watching him interact and support his fellow Braves on their various fields and courts of play. And those are the things you remember. Sport brings us together. Our program talks of B1, B4. Braves first, we're buff forever. Being open to growth will allow Jay, his teammates, and his classmates the opportunity to realize B1, B4 to the fullest. Thanks and well done, Jay. This group exemplified what Burbuff basketball looked like. Jay went the extra mile and always having his foot in the air ready to leap towards help. Thanks, Jay. Please give a hand to the boys basketball 2020 Chiefs Award winner, number four, Jay Higgins. Thank you, Coach Howard, and congratulations, Jay Higgins. And now to present the Chiefs Award for girls basketball, our head coach, Aaron Miller. Hi, my name is Aaron Miller, and I'm the girls basketball coach at Burbuff Jesuit. I wanna make sure I take this time to thank 
the 21 girls who were a part of our program this season and our four managers that we had this season as well. I am very proud of all 25 of the girls and thank them for their dedication to our program this season. From our freshmen and the JV team to our uh, seniors, to outstanding seniors and the varsity team. We were lucky to have two senior players this year, uh, Rachel Moore and Caroline Hauser, that were and have been the last two seasons great leaders and role models for our underclassmen. Additionally, we had two seniors in Chloe Eggleton and Annika Perkle that were helping with our, that were managers for us this year. All four of them were great examples of selflessness, how to treat other people, how to be a quality teammate. And I wanna make sure that I thank Rachel, Caroline, Chloe, and Annika and their families for their dedication to our program. The Chiefs Award at Burbuff in any program should go to a student athlete that exemplifies Burbuff values and Ignatian philosophy. Our program is lucky enough to have several girls who any year could win this honor. Our winner this year is somebody that you would want to compete with. She is a person that is going to compete hard, is going to work hard, and is going to be a great role model for everyone on the team. She's a classic vocal leader. And what I most admire and appreciate about this young woman is that she has done it all with joy, with a great smile on her face, optimism, positivity, there is just nothing that got this girl down. And so the winner for Girls Basketball Chiefs Award for the 2019-2020 season is senior Rachel Moore. Rachel started two years for our program that has been essentially rebuilding. And as I said, she has done it all with a smile on her face and just a really great perspective on what matters. She showed up to all the out-of-season workouts, the in-season practices with really just one goal, and that was for Rachel to be the best player that Rachel could be and to support her teammates. As a uh, junior, Rachel actually didn't start the first half of the season for us. She came off the bench, and it was very clear to us as a coaching staff by the second half of the season that her leadership was essential to our team and that we were better when she was on the floor. And she, so she earned that starting position. And what I really admired her about her during this time was Rachel coming off the bench or Rachel starting was the exact same person. Her work ethic was the same, her leadership was the same, how she treated other people was exactly the same. And that mentality um, is what led to her starting position, but it's also what led uh, to her being our program's best defender. Keeping with those Brebuff and Ignatian values that Rachel has, Rachel knew through this entire process the last two years that what mattered most was personal growth and team growth. And that's why she was able to always play with a smile on her face, no matter the score. Always have joy in just being able to play and play with her friends and play with her teammates. She was the first player, that's why she was able to uh, move on quickly after a turnover, be the first player to pick up her teammates when things weren't going well, or high five them when things were going well, or pick an opposing player up off the floor after they had been knocked down. When I look back at this time in my coaching career, I am going to be grateful to Rachel, grateful for the chance to have worked with her, to have known her, to coached her, and honestly, to have learned from her as a person. So Rachel, congratulations on this well-deserved honor. I'm proud of you. 
and thank you for your four years to our program. Thank you, Coach Miller, and congratulations to Rachel Moore. And now to present the Bowling Chiefs Award for boys and girls, head coach Rick Kirby. Hello, my name is Rick Kirby. I'm the head coach for the Vermont boys and girls bowling teams. I do want to explain something up front. I look a little funny, sound a little funny, because I have Bell's palsy. So please excuse that and I'll do the best I can. First, our team had kind of an up and down year, but one thing that's never up and down here at Rebuff, and that's the quality of the student that bowls on the team. We have a great group of bowlers and they all, in my estimation, could be Chiefs. But I believe our teams have voted very, very qualified people in, in, as Chiefs award winners. First, I'll go with the girls. This young lady at first seems very unassuming and quiet and you don't expect her to have great leadership qualities. But as you watch her compete, you find out she's a tremendous competitor and has fire in her eyes that she passes on to all of her teammates. And she even, toward the end of the year, started getting vocal in her leadership as well. I'm very, very proud to announce and glad to see that our team has voted the Chiefs Award winner for the girls team as Anna Ramirez. Now, continuing on with the boys team, uh, this young man has spent four years on the team, gotten to know him so well that he uh, has just kind of become part of the family. And he has done a great job going from a brand new bowler to a very good bowler and competed for the higher averages in the league this year and did a very, very good job in trying to help his teammates because you saw him active in all of our practices and trying to help people. Not only that, he's an academic all-state. And I would like to say that I'm extremely proud to announce our Chiefs Award winner for the boys Francisco Torres. Thank you, Coach Kirby, and congratulations to Anna Ramirez and Francisco Torres. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Coach Kirby for his time and dedication as the bowling coach. He will be retiring this year and will be missed deeply. Thank you, Coach Kirby. And now to present the Chiefs Award for fall and winter cheerleading, our head coach, Lindsey Cavell. Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay Cavell and I am presenting for the 2019-2020 cheerleading seasons. Uh, I just first want to start off by saying thank you to Father Bill, uh, thank you to Ted and Jake for all of your continued help and support this year. Also thank you to my parents for all your time, dedication you put in for both of our seasons. Um, both Lydia and I appreciate it more than you can imagine. Um, also to Lydia, um, I just want to say thank you for stepping up and taking on the assistant role this year. It's really helped um, in more ways than you can imagine. And I appreciate you just hitting the ground running, taking over when needed. And uh, so I look forward to uh, bringing you back next year. Last but not least, um, to Kelly Brown, our team mom. You have been my right hand for the past four years. Um, I want you to know how appreciative I am of your time, your energy, everything. I could not ask for a better team mom and you have left major shoes to fill. So thank you and I appreciate you so much. Um, I am presenting our Chief Award winners for both our fall and winter seasons. So first for fall 2019, our Chief Award winner, this recipient has been with me all four years and is so deserving of this award. She will truly be honored to win this award yet again. She is a leader, an inspiration to our underclassmen, our team. She is honest, trustworthy, and a responsible student and athlete. She works extremely hard and never gives up. I will miss her more than she will ever know and I look forward to her coming back to visit. 
The team voted this year's Chief Award winner for our fall 2019 season, Zoe Jensen. So congratulations, Zoe. I know you're going to be getting your award soon. Um, I believe Mr. Hampton is delivering that. So I can't wait to see a picture. Um, and then next, our winter season Chief Award winner. This recipient has also been with me for four years as well. And she has been so fun, so fun to coach. Um, I have seen this young woman overcome many obstacles over the four years and come out stronger than she ever thought possible. I am so proud of her. I am so proud of everything that she's accomplished and she has really stepped up as a leader for our team uh, and someone that everyone kind of just started looking up to and loved being around. She's honest and I can count on her to complete anything I ask for myself or the team. The team voted this year's Chief Award winner for our winter 2020 season is Hannah Crum. So congratulations, Hannah. Again, Mr. Hampton will deliver your award as well. So um, I want a picture. So to all my seniors, um, let me just say this. I've had you all for four years and I will tell you, this is not how we are gonna end our season and not how we are gonna end our four years together. As soon as all this crazy is over, we will get together as a team and have the celebration that you all deserve. You've put in so much time and I will miss you all more than you can even imagine. Thank you so much and I will see you all very soon. Thank you, Coach Cavell, and congratulations to Hannah Crony and Zoe Jensen. And now to present the Chiefs Award for dance, our head coach, Michael Humphrey. For the 2020 Chiefs Award recipient, I would like to congratulate Isabella Habash. Isabella has been an exceptional leader throughout the 2020 dance season. She's gone out of her way multiple times to make sure that the dance season has gone as smoothly as possible in assistance to me as my first year coaching at Rebuff Jesuit Preparatory School. She is a direct 100% correlation of the school's motto of men and women for others. She's always willing to come early, stay late, I've signed multiple applications for her for scholarships. I'm sad to see her go, but I know she'll do great things in the future. Congratulations, Isabella Habash. Thank you, Coach Humphrey, and congratulations to Bella Habash. And now to present the Chiefs Award for Hockey, our head coach, Willie Mitchell. Hello, Coach Mitchell from Rebuff Hockey here. Uh, strange and unfortunate time. Sorry that we all couldn't get together and celebrate uh, these outstanding performances by the student athletes at Rebuff Jesuit for the Chiefs Awards. Uh, hope you're staying safe and healthy and not driving each other too crazy. Dad, I'm bored. I'm making a movie over here. Come on now. It's a small house, but uh, looking back at the season, um, you know, we uh, so entering the season, uh, I knew we had to, uh, to replace a lot of goal scoring. We lost a lot of goal scoring from last year's state runner-up team. And um, what our identity would be as a team, I wasn't quite sure. But uh, before even any of that could get started, we ran into a ton of adversity. Um, with the arenas uh, both going down at the same time where our locker room is, uh, really really hurt us in terms of what we were trying to get done and we did the best we could that we ended up getting an hour of practice on Monday and Wednesday and uh, we we lost out on a lot of games uh, because there was nowhere to play them so they had to be canceled and um, had a key injury at the center position and uh, it was tricky to say the least but uh, I I, I, I keep telling the guys I kept telling the guys that uh, no matter what happens we just keep moving forward we keep getting better next man up and take advantage of every opportunity you can when you're on the ice and have the fun uh, because of last year's success we were bumped up into the uh, champions division for the city league and the teams that we will be playing this year were so uh, much better than the teams we would played in the past so now we're playing the 5a teams the Carmel Golds, the Zionsvilles, the Bloomingtons, 
uh, schools of 8,000 and 5,000 students, respectively. And uh, we knew we were going to be challenged uh, with everything that was going on, especially uh, playing against competition like that. Um, but I told the guys a number of times that uh, no one's going to feel sorry for us. Uh, we, we just got to continually try and get better. And um, I think with everything that was going on uh, around halfway through the year, we started seeing uh, um, some improvement for sure and um, uh, searching for good news, which came right around Christmas in that they told us that, hey, the arena uh, is going to be opening the first week of January, and uh, we could move back into our locker room. Um, that injured centerman, Ryan, he started practicing with us and actually started playing the last week of January for us, so that kind of filled that missing hole in our lineup. and. The guys just overall started improving, and uh, we actually had a very good record in our crossovers against the Northern team, so they bumped us up a class there to 3A, uh, which was fantastic. We always want to keep improving as a program. So we were playing against tougher competition, but I felt I really felt that the team uh, was starting to come together in areas and get better, and that's all we could ask for. And uh, you're trying to get to that state tournament to see what you can do by the end of the year. So being in 3A... Uh, it was where we got, and uh, we were the number eight seed, which is not a slap in the face, but it's not, you know, you're not the number one seed, that's for sure. And as the number eight seed, you were going to have to play the number one seed uh, that Friday night. And so it's a double elimination format, and uh, we kind of knew this from last year, and we were kind of well rehearsed for it, but we uh, really... Uh, had a game plan going into that Friday night game against the number one seed, which was Lake Central, a very good team, and uh, a team that we were hoping to catch taking a nap, and I think we kind of did. Uh, our guys came out that Friday night and played their best game of the year. Uh, we suffocated them in terms of time and space, and uh, we had a plan, and um, we beat them 3-2. to two. Uh, We'll never forget Cole Williams' goal on uh, that Friday night uh, when he danced through and uh, buried that breakaway and I thought the excitement and uh, the joy in everybody's eyes uh, was exactly why you get involved in sport. It was uh, outstanding. So now we have to play on Saturday the next day against Westfield, a team that we hadn't played all year because of all the facility uh, mishaps and our games had been canceled against them so we really didn't know what to expect. But the flat out Westfield didn't have a chance. Uh, we uh, we played even better the second game and won six to one, and some great great opportunities. But now we're in a great spot to get the. We're going to play in the state semifinal on Sunday, um, and to find out we're going to be playing Culver, the same team we played last year, and we ended their season to go to the state championship game last year. Now we have to play them again. And we had already played them in January, um, and that game, they really took it to us. Uh, you could tell that they were jacked up, ready to play, and uh, they gave it to us. They were a good hockey team, so now we have to play them again for the state semifinal to, for a chance to get to the state championship game. And uh, what a gutsy effort. Uh, everything, again, came together. We really, really... Uh, had strong performances in goal from Nick McConey, but I'll always remember at the end, Matt McKay diving head first to uh, make sure that puck goes into the empty net to go up 2-0 to win the game. And uh, to see the joy again of uh, the hard work all season and everything the guys had to go through, uh, and the parents too on the sidelines being excited, that was, uh, that was fantastic. Um, but that email... Uh, that I mentioned earlier, I had to come back and say, okay, uh, what did that email say again? <laughs> and yeah, well, they changed the venue. And not only did they change the venue, but now it really affects me, us, because we got to that game, the state championship final. And of course, they had moved the game right back up to the same spot that we had to play in last year. And not only is it an Olympic ice sheet, which is going from a pond to a lake, um, very big wide ice surface but we're also having to go play um, the team that plays that's their home arena all year right in their town so uh, that email ended up hurting us quite a bit but uh, 
um, the guys went up and we did everything we could and they battled hard and um, uh, we lost in the, the, the state championship game for the second straight year and uh, no one likes that feeling that's for sure uh, finishing second two years in a row but at the same point in time I think the guys had uh, such a great experience of, of playing in a championship or playing for a championship uh, especially when things all year may not have presented that uh, opportunity so I think uh, years from now they look back and say hey, what a great experience that was and we certainly accomplished a lot and they should be proud of it. I want to thank everybody for a great season of growth and development and uh, first and foremost Ted Hampton and Burboff I can't thank you enough for the contributions to our program uh, and the willingness to help us in any uh, capacity it's just outstanding and it really goes uh, unmatched in terms of any other hockey program in the state of Indiana um, for sure and we thank you very much for that um, Kevin Murphy and the board of directors for Burbuff Hockey uh, it was uh, another great year of development and growth I can't thank you enough for your time and guidance. A uh, special shout out to Brian Johnson who probably had the, the hardest job of everybody uh, all year long too. Uh, once the facilities went down he is our scheduler and he had to take a lot of questions, a lot of heat from other parents. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And it's because it, it was our only option and uh, having to try to schedule games uh, Hey, if we have a time slot at 11 o'clock or 7 in the morning, which one do you want? It's like, uh, neither, but we got to play one of them. So he did a fantastic job all season long, and thank you very much, Brian, for doing that. And uh, also wanted to, uh, uh, very special thanks, of course, to the parents. Um, uh, lots of challenges this year, and it was not easy, but uh, thank you for staying together. Thank you uh, for staying positive and, and uh, helping out whenever needed. And volunteering your time um, after a hard day's work I know it's hard and uh, I thank you for that as I know the players do but why are we here today correct it's for the Chiefs Awards and uh, um, I'm very excited to uh, get into uh, this year's winner so this young man certainly um, looked right into the eye of adversity uh, of everything going on in the season and was as usual a calming and positive influence on the uh, rest of the team and, and those are, that are around him. Uh, as a senior, uh, and there were eight other, others of them, eight seniors on our team, there's only 18 on our roster, so a lot of seniors. Uh, it can be difficult sometimes uh, uh, to balance your leadership skills, and to be just one of the boys, uh, it's not easy. But uh, as a side story, I did once coach a team. We started from scratch. So their senior year, I had 18 seniors. Uh, and you really have 18, 20 on the team. I had 18 seniors. And uh, senior night uh, took like one week. So that should never happen again. Uh, long story. But, uh, um, but this young man, um, being a leader, he was all about balance, and uh, it's not easy and it's not always fun, but this young man had, had always had the perfect approach, and uh, it was truly a blessing having him around uh, uh, as a coach. Uh, he made my job very easy. Um, transporting from arena to arena, uh, there's lots of stuff to bring, and I'd always go to him first, and I'd say, hey, you got to make sure that I got it. I got it. And so much so before I even finished my question, I got it. I got a coach. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that's a, a, a pleasure to be around for sure. But the unselfish acts of kindness, uh, like those from a leader in the group, they, they, they don't go unnoticed. And uh, I um, think the others picked up on that right away also. And he's had such a positive effect on a lot of uh, players in our locker room, for sure. On the ice, he was uh, always very uh, vocal and led the team uh, with encouragement, no matter the situation. And uh, there were some times this year against some really good opponents that it felt like the sky was falling, but uh, he still managed the positive tone 
and manage to say the right things at the right time. Um, before every game and uh, at the end of every practice, bring it in, boys. And uh, that's, you knew the, the leader uh, of the group was. Here I stood in front of the school and presented the Chiefs Award winner. Uh, and again, uh, once again, it's my pleasure um, to present in back-to-back -back years a much-deserved honor and recognition as voted on by his teammates. This year's Chiefs Award winner is Senior Captain Mac Perkins. Congratulations, Mac. Well-deserved. It's a pleasure coaching you. And I wish you all the luck in the uh, future with hockey and school. Thank you, Coach Mitchell, and congratulations to Mac Perkins. And now to present the Chiefs Award for boys and girls swimming and diving, our head coach, B.J. Sayre. Hi, I'm B.J. Sayre, head coach of the swimming and diving team at Burbuff. Thank you to Ted, Jake, and Todd, and the entire Burbuff staff for making sure we've had everything we need to succeed every season. Us coaches wouldn't be able to do what we love without your continued dedication. Thank you to my assistant coaches, Rick, Shane, Alex, and Addie, for all your tireless work making sure our young athletes are getting the coaching they deserve and for fostering an environment in which they can thrive. A special thank you to all the Burbuff parents who make sure their kids have everything they need to succeed at school, practice, and at home. Thank you for realizing your kids' dreams to swim and dive and for getting them to practice despite the early and late times. Our practice venue change this year came with quite a few challenges and everyone handled them wonderfully. Congratulations to the Burbuff boys and girls swimming and diving teams. Us coaches have always been extremely proud of these young men and women and they again rose to the occasion this year. Last season we had four seniors graduate and this year we are blessed to add 13 freshmen and an upperclassman to the team, taking our total number of athletes to 36. We also had three divers this year, breaking our six year streak of just having one. This is the third year in a row we've had a swimming and diving team above 30 participants and all the kids have done a great job of creating a culture of openness and inclusiveness. In swimming as in other sports, there are only so many total spots when competing and the larger the team, the more understanding everyone has to be. With significant help from the rest of the coaching staff and from our team captains, Melanie Marshall, Sophia Whitsett, Jack Kovach, Ian Miller, and Robbie Sheffield, we immediately had a cohesive unit with the goal of adapting to our new swim schedule, making each other better, placing well at sectionals, making it to state, all while having fun. With everyone's hard work, we succeeded at all of these goals. The boys and girls teams started the year off strong by beating Cathedral and Ritter in a well-fought meet. After several other dual meets against other schools, our girls team finished sixth and our boys fifth at the Marion County Invite that hosted 15 teams. This was a great gauge of our potential and we all wanted to do better afterwards. Everyone continued to practice and compete well during Christmas break and it showed at the Circle City Conference and schools with no pools invites. At conference, the girls team beat out Chittard, Ron Colley, Garen, and Heritage to win. The boys team finished a very close second place to Ron Colley. At the Burbuff Schools with No Pools invite, the results were reversed, with the girls team finishing second and the boys team claiming first place out of 18 teams from around the state. At sectionals, the girls team placed third with lots of time drops and personal bests. Our 200 freestyle relay and Bell Henshaw in the 100 and 200 freestyle qualified to swim at high school state. The boys team finished second at sectionals, sending Jack Kovach to state in the 200 freestyle. It was a fantastic season that would not have been possible without the hard work of all the swimmers, divers, their parents, and the Baruch community with your prayers and support. We are all very proud of our male and female Chiefs Award winners. It has been a truly amazing experience to see all of them grow into representatives of Burbuff and our swimming and diving team. Our Girls Swimming and Diving Award goes to a very deserving young woman who has worked so hard over the past four years. This year she stepped into a new role as team captain and helped to lead and encourage our team to success both in and out of the pool. For the past four years she's not only been a stellar athlete and had fantastic practice attendance with the swim team, but she's also balanced that with competitively playing soccer at the same time. 
At Brebeuf, we highly encourage multi-sport athletes, and this young lady takes that to a whole new level, all while keeping her grades up and her teammates motivated. In addition to swimming at the meets, she's always stayed positive, which is hard to do, and made sure there was a cheering section for both the boys and the girls at every meet. Every day she came to practice and encouraged everyone, despite juggling her exceptionally hectic schedule. She's contributed so much to the swimming and diving team and the Brebeuf community over her four years, which is why I'm happy to announce that Melanie Marshall is this year's Girls Swimming and Diving Chiefs Award winner. Congratulations, Melanie. Our Boys Swimming and Diving Award also goes to a very deserving young individual who's overcome so much these past few years. He started his high school swimming career as a sophomore and did a fantastic job. He swam club over the summers and came back each year in fantastic shape and expecting great things. In the middle of his junior season, he injured his back and had to be sidelined for the rest of the season. Instead of removing himself from the team, he threw himself into it even more and still came to the pool even though he had to wear his back brace. As soon as he could, he got back into the pool and started to push himself to get into shape. He worked extremely hard and was a tremendous example to the rest of the team while he pushed through the many obstacles that presented themselves along the way. He has always been an inspiration to us all in what we can do if we believe in ourselves. We are very proud of Robbie Sheffield for all of his accomplishments and, sir, and are so happy that he is this year's Boys Swimming and Diving Chiefs Award winner. Congratulations, Robbie. Thank you, Coach Sayre, and congratulations to Melanie Marshall and Robbie Sheffield. And last, but certainly not least, to present the Chiefs Award for Wrestling, our head coach, Corey Watkins. Hello, everyone, and especially to the Burbuff community. I want to thank Father Bill, Father Chris, Ted, Jake, Joel, and Greg Van Slimbrook, and the entire administration for their support and for the wrestling program. I want to thank the, all the parents for their support as well. You donated your time, talents, and gifts all year long, and we appreciate it so much. Also, thank you for allowing your sons and daughter to wrestle this year and to participate in such a great sport here at Brebuff. I also want to thank my assistant coach, Brandon, for doing such a great job this year, for being his first year here, and I am grateful for his knowledge and willing to help out anywhere he could to help this program become better. And there's a theme here at Brebuff, and that is every team has a great team mom, including our team. I have the best team mom in the state when it comes to wrestling. I also am blessed and grateful for all that she does for the team. She provides breakfast and lunch at every tournament for the wrestlers. She has kept score, videotape matches, and keeps me grounded when I get upset with the refs. A quick recap of our season. Last year we had five wrestlers. This year we ended with 22 wrestlers, including our first ever upper buff history of female wrestler, Ailey Ferries Rowe. We didn't have any seniors on our team this year. We went five and 10 as a team in duels. We had wins from Carnal Ritter, Providence Cristo Ray, Victory Prep, Manuel High School, and Bishop Chatard. We had the school's first ever, not one, but two individual conference champions by Nolan Buckman and Isaiah Martin. We also placed fourth in the Freshman Marion County Tournament this year. The Chief Award winner this year showed great leadership by bringing wrestlers to practice, meets, and also taking them home. He would also push the underclassmen during practice and work with them to make them and the team better. He had fun winning by smiling to the crowd while he was getting the pin. This gentleman placed third at the Marion County Tournament, second at the Corridon Invite, Conference Champion, placed third at the Sectional and Regional Tournaments, and he is the most recent semi-state qualifier since 2004. His final record was 26 and eight. Not only did he succeed on the mat, but also in the classroom. 
He received this year an Academic All-State Honorable Mention. And I am proud to recognize this year's Chief Award winner, Isaiah Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach Watkins, and congratulations to Isaiah Martin. Congratulations to all of our Chiefs Award winner. I know this isn't the ending to some of your seasons that you would have liked, but we're so happy to be able to honor you in this way. We hope that you're safe and healthy at home, that your families are safe and healthy at home. Know that we're praying for you, and if there's anything that we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out to either myself, any of your coaches, or any of the Brebuff Jesuit faculty or staff. Thank you, and God bless.